involved with. Now, Gino Cristomurdi said something very, very true when he said, if we can really understand the problem, the answer will come out of it, because the answer is not separate from the problem. They're indivisible. And you know, what I find in like some what they call new age areas and stuff like that is, you mustn't talk about anything negative. Oh, no. Well, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I've never come across any knowledge that was negative. I've come across knowledge I'd rather not uh, be true, but I've never come across knowledge that's actually negative. Ignorance is freaking negative, not knowledge, because you can do something with knowledge. And so the idea that you know, we should be frightened of, 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 of looking at things as they really are, I mean, it's just another version of looking the other way and hoping it will go away. It won't. So when people say, well, what's the solutions? Well, fundamental to any solution is to understand the nature of what we're dealing with. Because then we've got a much better chance of dealing with it. We know what we, we've got to deal with. And, you know, a lot in the conspiracy research arena, like I said earlier, brilliant. There's so many people involved in this now. But the vast majority of them will not go even close to where we're going to go in the next two hours or so because of religious belief systems or because, well, even if it's true and I say it, I'm going to lose my credibility. I think you lose your credibility if you don't go with what you, be, you believe to be true and you edit that on the basis of what will people think of me if I say it. That's how we got into this freaking mess. And unless we understand how deep the rabbit hole goes and what we're dealing with, we're never going to find an answer to it. And just stockpiling weapons and, and fighting the system is just playing into the system's hands for reasons that will become clear, indeed, uh, possibly already have. So we are infinite awareness, uh, capable of multiple realities and perceiving multiple realities. We've been caught in the bamboozle, which has led to this and this through the uh, control of perception. So who or what is ultimately behind this? Uh, or at least uh, the depth of the rabbit hole we've got so far. Well, they ain't for a start. Because they're just here today, gone tomorrow, people who are just puppets of a system that's here yesterday, today, tomorrow, and the next day. Um, it's not him. I don't care if he's supposed to be the most powerful man in the world. He ain't. He's another bloody glove puppet. And anyone in that job, the same applies to. It's not him either. Here today, gone tomorrow, uh, presidents and leaders who are replaced by other leaders. But the thing, the system, the direction goes on because there's something behind that that's pushing that direction on. And nor even is it the corporations. They're still at the level of playing out the control. It's not actually at the point of creating it. It's not the origin. It's not people sitting around tables. They're still at the point of playing it out. You can go into the shadows and you can get closer to where it's coming from, but you're still at the play out level. You go even deeper into the rabbit hole, really deep into the web. And that's where you find people like the Rothschilds and such like. You don't see us, but we control your life. But there's levels beyond that where it's coming from. But where is it? Okay, well, I'm going to cut to the freaking chase, really. The truth doesn't change because you don't want to hear it. Now, obviously, I can't go into great detail with this. I mean, the, the perception deception is that bloody big. This the whole day is about connecting dots to show the picture. And all I can say is for 25 years, I've been full time on this. And the, the evidence has brought me to this uh, conclusion. Um, there's no one out there. See, all that is there's no one out there. And when you think that what we're seeing is only what is uh, within a narrow band of visible light, and then you think what possibilities lie beyond that in the great infinite forever, the idea that we are alone is absolutely beyond ludicrous and the fact that you can be seen as crazy for believing that shows how inverted the system is. This w reality, this infinity, is teeming with different expressions of life. And some of it's interacting with us. This is um, 
professor of mathematics and astronomy at Queen's Mary University London, Bernard Carr, he said, our consciousness interacts with another dimension, actually many other dimensions. Our physical senses only show us a three-dimensional universe. What exists in the higher dimensions are entities we cannot touch with our physical senses. Exactly. So, the idea that we just operate in isolation of everything else is, for me, uh, crazy. So, like I say, I'll cut to the chase. This reality that we're experiencing has been hijacked by a force that some ancient people called archons, but there's different names right across the ancient world for the same force, the same entities. This is when the penny drops, when all these different names for the gods all over the world turn out to be different names for the same force because they're described in the same way. And um, all over the world you see this. Uh, in um, the Far East, Central America and other places, they're known as the serpent gods. The Zulus call them the Chittahuri, the children of the serpent. They're the Anunnaki in, uh, in Suma, Babylon, now Iraq. They're our snake brothers to the Hopi people of um, North America. They're the star people, many, many uh, examples of that. They are the demons of Christianity. To the Gnostics, they are archons. And to the Islamic and pre-Islamic world, they're called the jinn. And in their prime form, they are energetic uh, in, in nature, but they can take form, as I will talk about. So, like I say, they're described so much in the same way, because they, they're different names for the same thing. So, the uh, Gnostic people, uh, not the Christian Gnostics, the pre-Christian Gnostics, that ran the Great Library at Alexandria, and they also manifested as the Cathars in southern France, they say that the archons are made from luminous fire. The jinn, according to Islamic and pre-Islamic uh, belief, are made from smokeless fire. And you see this correlation of description um, wherever you go. Now this, for me, was one of the great finds ever in terms of understanding the nature of what is happening. At Nagamadi in um, Egypt, about 77 miles north of, of Luxor on the Nile, in 1945, a sealed jar was found with loads and loads of documents in it, leather bound. And they told um, the beliefs and the perceptions of this people called the Gnostics. And the Gnostics um, had a completely different um, view of reality than religion, which is why the Roman Catholic church and the Roman church tried to destroy them wherever they got um, any strength and any foothold. They ran the great library at Alexandria, which had something like half a million scrolls uh, detailing the beliefs of the ancient world and the, the history of the ancient world, destroyed um, by the Roman church. And like I say, the Cathars, who were destroyed again by the Roman church in 12... Uh, 44, I think it was, at, uh, at uh, uh, that uh, place in France, Montségur, that fort on the hill where I've been a couple of times. The religious establishment wanted these people destroyed because they were dangerous, because they had the truths they didn't want the people to know about. And um, this is what these scrolls um, and this find at Nagamadi said. One-fifth of the texts, and there were lots of them, were about a force called, they called the Archons, which they, they say created our physical universe, and they equated them with the Judeo-Christian Yahweh Jehovah God. And when you see the Old Testament, kill them and flog them and all that stuff, God, um, it fits precisely with the descriptions of the Archons by the Gnostics. So what they say in these, in these writings, in these texts, is that, well, first of all, Archon means prince, ruler, authorities, or from the beginning. That's why they use the word Archon. They said that um, the Archons and the Lord Archon, which they called the Demiurge, was a fake god that created our physical or material reality as we perceive it. 
The Gnostics related the Demiurge, like I say, to the Judeo-Christian Yahweh, Jehovah God, and they are inorganic, not resulting from or produced by growth. They are artificial. And um, they say in these texts that they created the inorganic parts of the solar system, but that the sun, the moon, and the earth were a system that were of itself and different from the rest, which was kind of interesting with what will come later. Um, they said that the uh, Demiurge Archons had no creative imagination and envy humans because we have. They're like cyborgs. Again, we're coming back to the inorganic. Like cyborgs, a robotic race that can imitate but not innovate. And the word they used was counter-mimicry. Now, what, it, what they were saying, in effect, is if you gave these Archons a blank sheet of paper, they could create nothing on it. They don't have that creative imagination, that what was called intentionality. But you give them something with um, a piece of paper with something on it, and they can twist it and manipulate it once it exists. Um, and they talked, uh, they used the term fantasia, because these entities, they said, just as the Islamic people say about the jinn, have the ability to create virtual reality illusions. They're mind parasites, they possess humanity and um, manipulate the way they perceive everything. And they say the word you could use more than any about the Archons was deception. They are deceivers. And what they create is an inversion of the natural order, which will become so crystal clear as we go along. Why? Interesting, like we, we see these different names and actually for the same thing. The, the, the uh, classic Satan is called the deceiver and the demon of demons, as this demiurge is called the Archon of Archons, the Lord Archon. Now, as I've kind of studied this and, and put it together, it seems to me that what we're looking at is what I would call a self-aware distortion, and it's self-aware inversion. Now, this is why the first two hours of today was so important. Everything is conscious. Even a distortion is conscious. Even an inversion is conscious, but it's conscious in a way that reflects the inversion and the distortion. Um, and if you look at what we call evil, it is live written backwards. Evil is simply an inversion of life, an inversion of perception, and evil is extreme ignorance, which is the inversion of truth and awareness. And because this force, this archontic force, shall I call it, is an inversion, an inversion of life, that's why it and anything attached to it is obsessed with death, which is an inversion of life. And so you get the Satanists who worship these gods in their rituals obsessed with death. That's why they're attracted to churchyards and cemeteries and stuff. And so the death cult, which is what this archontic force and its followers are, is about destroying, it's about killing. Um, and whereas the natural order is about life and abundance. And so when you look at the way the system, the archontic system that I'll come to, is destroying life, it's destroying life in war, but it's destroying life, the natural world. And it seems a contradiction but it's not because that's their world the archon world described by the Gnostics is is one of death one of no creative imagination it's a death cult and all this pollution and environmental devastation is absolutely what it wants because that's its reality and the other thing about the archontic mind is it's what we call psychopathic. They're psychopaths. The definition of which is this. No empathy, no remorse, no empathy. No ability to put themselves in the feelings of those that suffer the consequences of their actions. Once you have no empathy, you have no limit to what you will do because you have no emotional consequence for doing it. No remorse for what you do, no shame. Parasites, overwhelmingly. Why? Because they have no 
creativity of their own, so they have to parasite off the creativity of the target population. That's what the system does. Look at banking. What else is that? But an exercise in parasites. And these people, which manifest as many world leaders and all the rest of it I'll come to, are pathological liars. Which is, what is a pathological liar? An inversion of truth, inversion. And they'll do whatever it takes to get their end uh, uh, goal. Other thing, the Gnostics used in these texts the word hal, meaning simulation. They talked about the fact that these archons could create what we would call virtual realities through controlling perception. They said um, the, about the archons, they make something appear to happen that does not happen. They can induce a virtual reality experience in the, in the translation. And what do the Islam and pre-Islamic world say about the jinn? They can manipulate humans by creating illusions. This will become big time relevant the longer we go into this two hours. So we're back to this, that um, what our reality does uh, or is, it's possibilities and probabilities folded into existence by perception. So this whole archontic system is about programming our perception, programming a, a distortion of our perception, an inversion of our perception, which is why we live in a madhouse, because it's an inversion of the natural order. Um, so the idea is to disconnect the human uh, mind the human droplet from the ocean and lock us into this tiny set of frequencies which then we perceive as all that there is to see and gotcha. Now before this what I call hack and you'll see why I say hack shortly, um, there was another world described by the ancients and very much along the lines of the Avatar movie and the Navi, the blue people and how they interacted with the natural world, how they communicated with animals, how they communicated with each other um, beyond speech. And what the um, uh, Gnostic texts say is that the Archons made a bad copy, as they describe it, of our original reality. The original reality was that kind of avatar world. And when you say that without the first two hours, it would sound ludicrous and ridiculous and that's impossible. But we're not dealing with the physical. We're dealing with information. That world is an information construct which we decode into a lovely world. This is an information construct which we decode into the world that we have today. And the idea, this might, might need a battery mate, uh, the idea is to, uh, uh, was to create this illusory reality and um, replace the old reality and then, um, this uh, needs a battery I think, because it's going on me. Anyway, and then tuning humans into that bad copy. Now when you think about it, we, we, we're tuned into an information field of certain frequencies, we uh, decode that into a reality. If we are then moved, our dial is moved so we're decoding something else, we just decode another completely different reality. And that's what is meant by this bad copy. So this is a, 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 an image that sums it up. I'm walking outside in the sun. You don't have to be in the sun, you just have to decode the fact you're in the freaking sun. And it's the same with this bad copy. You just decode a reality and you think it's real because it's the only one that you can perceive. So you can decode a reality of the avatar kind, and then you are fed a different information source, tuned into it, ways that I'll come to, and then you decode a different reality, what I call the archontic reality. And this, I would strongly suggest, is the fake reality that we have been decoding through what we call known human history, modern human history, and further, that we think is just a natural world. It ain't. If you can create a, a virtual reality simulation, then you can create an alternative to it as well, which is what the bad copy is. And 
you're tuned to it through something called entrainment. Entrainment is the um, process by which if you have three violins and it's, they're all plucked to the same note, therefore they are the dominant frequency, put another violin in there, either plucked to another note or, or not plucked to any note, and it will start vibrating in sympathy with them because they're the dominant frequency. And if you can create a dominant frequency, then you can start to entrain the human uh, decoding system into that frequency and suddenly you're decoding a completely different reality. And once that happens, they got gotcha. you. If you don't realize that's what's happened, because to you, well, this is, this is how it is, mate. This is the world, isn't it? Well, what world is it? That's my question. And, you know, I, I liken this archontic distortion, inversion, to a computer virus. It absolutely fits. A computer virus, in our terms, obviously not exactly the same, infecting human perception. So what is, like I said earlier, a computer virus? It's rogue information. It's just introducing into the original uh, system rogue information which distorts their word again and inverts the original system. So this is what a computer virus can do. Damage files, slow the system, show messages, take control. And uh, how a computer virus works? A virus is a small piece of software that piggybacks on real programs. The archons do not have creative imagination. They cannot create. They can only distort what already exists. Uh, how can you describe a computer virus in better terms than that? Similar to the way a biological virus must hitch a ride on a cell, a computer virus must piggyback on top of some other program or document in order to launch. Once a computer virus is running, it can affect other programs or documents. It has piggybacked the original reality and has distorted it. And this is what is manifested as what the um, Gnostics called a bad copy. Now, we are taking energy sustenance from the energetic field. And we take energy from that field within the frequency band that we're um, vibrating to or resonating to it. We can't take it outside of that band because we can't sync with it, like Radio 1 can't sync with Radio 2. So if you are a distortion and an inversion, you cannot get energetic sustenance from the natural order because you're not in that frequency band. So to get your sustenance, your energetic sustenance, you have to get it from other distorted energy which is in the frequency band that you are interacting with. And so the peoples around the world, the different cultures, etc., talk about the fact that these entities, it's a universal virtually description, feed off human energy, but not just any human energy. Low vibrational, as I would call it, human emotion. They feed off fear and anxiety and frustration and anger and conflict and war because they are a distortion of the natural order of love, of peace and balance. And thus, these archontic inversions, energies can feed off them. And so, it's very like in the matrix where the machines, again, inorganic, were feeding off human energy. And so, while we, coming from the natural order perspective of love and peace and harmony, think that war and suffering and fear are a bad thing to them, they are essential to their energetic survival. That's why they create them. This in archontic inversion, which expresses itself in multiple ways, can't sync with that. That's what it needs for its sustenance. Thus, it has manipulated the structure of our society to generate it in unbelievable abundance. All these things that we talked about earlier, all generating low vibrational human emotion. And anyone thinks that, you know, it's kind of just some airy-fairy imagination. This was what happened to the um, uh, energy field 
the Earth energy field at the time of 9-11, when that, there was that massive emotional um, explosion in response to what happened in New York and Washington. We are impacting upon it. And this is just a few days ago in a newspaper. Babies smell their mother's fear to learn what to be afraid of. Mothers emit odors that teach their babies to what to be afraid of, even if the fearful experience is one the baby has never been exposed to, according to this study. Even, you know, in the fricking womb, we put the uh, new life is being prepared to, for a lifetime of fear. What is fear? Lunch to these people. They are feeding off all this emotion and low vibrational energy. And that's why the pressure is to, is, is, is to create events all the time that, uh, that uh, produce more and against going the other way that produce less. And so this scene in the Matrix was very much in line with what I'm talking about. The Matrix is a computer-generated dream world built to keep us under control in order to change the human being into one of these. And on one level, that's what we are, generators of distorted emotional energy. And you know, you talk to alternative healers and people on the true cutting hedge of healing, and they'll tell you that virtually every illness is based in emotion. Because emotion creates energetic distortions, not only to be absorbed by these entities, this distortion, but also to be trapped in the body, which manifests then as disease, disharmony in the body um, caused by emotion. So Carl Sagan's bamboozle is really the inversion of the natural order, which is why this world is turned on its head. Wherever you look, it's an inversion of what not just we would like it to be, but an inversion of the original reality that it replaced. And this is one reason why you get Satanists and stuff like that using inverted symbols for their symbolic language. Everything is inverted for the reasons I'm talking about. And I've used this quote before, but how much more relevant is it now from Michael Elner? Just look at us, everything is backwards, everything is upside down. Doctors destroy health, lawyers destroy justice, universities destroy knowledge, governments destroy freedom, the major media destroy information, and religions destroy spirituality. Inversion everywhere. And these expressions of this archontic force um, are genetic liars because lying is an inversion of truth. And these, this archontic um, energetic inversion distortion is not in this reality in form, although it can be, as I'll come to, but it exists in a reality very close to this one. And the idea is to distort our reality more and more so it starts to blend and combine and come together with theirs. They are seeking to turn this reality into an extension of their reality through distortion and inversion. Now, this is even Alexander. He said that when he had his massive near-death experience, the first place he went to was very unpleasant. And to me, what he described was very much like this archontic realm that I'm talking about. He said he heard the sound of rhythmic pounding that was distant yet strong, a little like a heartbeat, but darker and more mechanical. Mechanical, that keeps coming up. Cyborg, like the sound of metal against metal, as if a giant subterranean blacksmith is pounding an anvil somewhere off in the far distance. Pounding so hard that the sound vibrates through the earth or the mud or wherever it is that you are. Reptilian, worm-like creatures crowded past him. He said, and sometimes rubbing against him with their smooth and spiky skins, faces bubbled up out of the darkness and became ugly and threatening. The pounding intensified and became like the work beat for some army of troll-like underground workers. He became aware of a smell, a little like faces, a little like blood, a little like vomit, a biological smell, in other words, but a biological death not biological life and whatever, that fits absolutely the descriptions of these, um, these entities and this uh, inversion. 
and they're seeking to bring their reality into ours by sinking their frequency. The golden age society, the way it's described, and again, in the way the Avatar movie uh, uh, portrayed that society, was a heart society. This was the point from which they interacted with the world, the heart, which allowed them to experience reality outside the bounds of time and space. When you come from, from the heart, you, you don't do hatred. The, the heart doesn't hate. The, the heart doesn't seek to destroy. And so this inversion was about taking the point of interaction with the world from the point of love, heart, into the emotions. And how do we see now our society and how people interact with it from the level of emotional response and emotional reaction instead of here? And when that moves to that, that we interact with the world here, the world dramatically changes. And so, like I said earlier with this um, heart uh, coherence with the central nervous system and the brain, once we get into this, we start to disconnect from the heart, disconnect from beyond time and space and start to have this as the governor of our perception. And if you take it in a computer game terms, the idea is to pull us into the lowest level where this archontic force works from. Now, these Gnostic writings have been estimated to have been buried in that sealed jar between about 350 and 400 AD, which corresponds with the destruction of the Great Library of Alexandria run by Gnostic thinkers. But it's, it's suggested that they were possibly written about 100 AD. In those uh, documents, all that time ago, best part of 2,000 years, they say that the archons can take form and the main forms they take are reptilian entities and those known today as greys. The archons um, describe the greys as um, like an unborn baby or fetus with gray skin and dark, unmoving eyes. That was nearly 2,000 years ago, and it's the same description as what we call gray entities today in the modern world. And I, of course, I've been saying for a long time now that behind the human networks of control is a, a reptilian form, but I did say a long time ago I didn't think it ended there. I thought it went into the realms of 